Yeah, it's on. It's not how much technology it has to be. It does, yeah. Okay, good evening, uh, everyone. It's great to see you all. And uh, this is the second class of the series speaking about Jewish astrology. Um, I will try to um, condense the first class uh, in a few months. Um, we started last time to speak about Jewish astrology. We did prove that Jewish astro uh, astrology is actually a Jewish science. Um, it started in the time of the Torah, in the time of Abraham Avinu. Abraham was already a uh, new astrology. And the fact is, Abraham Avinu turns to God telling him, telling him that he's not going to have a child because he's looked into the stars. And God tells him, you are right, according to astrology and according to what you see, you, shouldn't, you wouldn't be able to have a child. But you are lemana min mina hamazal. You are, uh, as a Jew, as a Hebrew, you are uh, above any constellation. And therefore, I decided that you're going to have a child. So we did prove that uh, astrology is a Jewish science, that God sometimes sends us messages through these stars, but God is the one who decides what is going to happen. It's no stars that are going to decide. The stars are a tool, are the vessels of God, and God sometimes sends us messages through the stars. We spoke also about the fact that as Jews we should use astrology and we should know our sign, our astrological sign, because uh, our rabbis teach us that when we are born, uh, the way, the place that we are born, the time that we are born, the, that we are born, uh, the day that we are born and so on and so forth, could um, in a sense impact the way we are going to behave, the way that we are going to have our midot, our character traits. We spoke about that as well. So therefore, it's important for us to know our mazal, our star, our constellation, in order to know what our the midot that we, are, that we have, the character traits that we have, and work on that, see what's good about us, what's less good about us, and try to become, to perfect ourselves by knowing that. We spoke also about the fact that there are uh, four elements, right? And every month falls into an element. That does not mean that the other elements don't work on that month. But that particular element is um, um, more, more dominant during that particular uh, month. Okay? And we spoke about, of course, the uh, actual signs of uh, the zodiac. We're not going to go into all the details, but we did pr prove that um, it has to do with the Jewish month. Every sign is connected to the Jewish month. So, um, as we said, we start with the month of Nisan, not with the month of Tishrei, right? And the reason for that is because according to the Torah, the first month is the month of Nisan, because we came out of Egypt, we came in a sense, it was the beginning, the beginning of the Jewish nation, coming out of Egypt, accepting the Torah, and so on and so forth. So we start with the month of Nisan, and with the month of Nisan, as we said, we go with the different um, elements, and Nisan is Esh, is fire, Iyar is Afar, earth, if you want to write it, please go ahead. Uh, Sivan is um, yeah. air, um, Tammuz is water, Av again is um, fire, uh, Elul is earth, Tishrei is um, Air again, um, Cheshvan is Mayim water, Kislev is fire, Tevet is earth, Shvat is air again, and Adar is water. These are the 12 months, okay? And this is important for you to know because according to the month that you were born, you will be connected to that particular element. We will explain that, okay? So let's start the, um, that was a quick review. Um, we'll start now with uh, some new material. 
Um, it is important to know. Erto, good evening. It is important to know uh, the basics, as we said, about the elements and about the months. What we have to know is the following. If we were born under a certain element and after, uh, under a certain month, and we have certain bad character traits, that doesn't mean in any way that we are evil people. We shouldn't think that way in any way. Okay? And I'll prove it to you from the Gemara and Shabbat. The Talmud in Masech Tractate Shabbat says the following. It says that there are seven mazalot, seven constellations, every day, and every hour of the day is ruled by one constellation. Okay? And therefore, one of these constellations that we have is Me'adim, Mars. Okay? Now, if someone is born under the Mazal, the constellation of Mars, Me'adim, the Gemara in Shabbat claims that this person is going to be drawn to blood. Because Me'adim comes from the word Dam, blood. And therefore, if someone is going to be attracted, drawn to blood, what is he going to say to himself? Okay. He should okay. be a doctor. Ah, be a doctor. <laughs> Excellent. Or he could say to himself, he's going to become a serial killer. And when he's going to come to court, he's going to tell him, not my fault. Why is it not my fault? Because I was born under Mars. And according to the Gemara in Shabbat, I have a legitimate way of, of killing people because that's who I am. And when he's going to come in front of God, he's going to, call, he's going to tell him, look, you're a uh, you can't. I'm not talking about me. You, you are the one who, uh, for some reason, made me born on that particular mazal constellation. Ain't my fault. You can't say that. That means that the person has a choice. Right? Because uh, being drawn to blood, as it was just said, a person could be a butcher, he could be a mohel, he could be a surgeon, he could be a doctor. There's many ways of dealing with blood. And therefore, the proof the Gemara says that if someone has certain midot, certain uh, character traits that are not so good, it doesn't mean that he's a bad person, he's an evil person. It means that he has to know that and work on himself to become a better person as he uh, finds out more about his personality. Which means that it's a choice. We could either use it negatively or positively. So therefore, when we're going to speak about the Mazalot, about the constellations, and you're going to find out something about yourself, and you're going to say, yeah, that, me, that, that is me. What am I going to do with that? In no way you should take it negatively, but what you should do is you'll have to know how to deal with it. We have a choice. Right? The, the Torah says clearly, right? I'm giving you, each one of you, each one of us, right? life, death, good, and bad. It's up to you to choose life. Which means God already, in the Torah itself, says clearly, that you have a choice to choose a life, to choose to do good. It's our own choice. Now, it's good to know why, because then we could know our shortcomings, and again, work on that. And therefore, it's important to know, and it's interesting to note, that character traits in Hebrew are called midot. Mida is a measurement. When I know my character traits, I know how to measure them. I have to know how to measure them, how much to use them. To use it a little bit, to use it a lot, and so on and so forth. For example, right, we have cars. And usually, we don't recommend someone to get angry. But there are times that there's actually a commandment to get angry. The Rambam speaks about, Mamanti speaks about, when it comes to education, for example, Rambam says clearly, when you educate the child, sometimes you have to use a little bit of anger. Or, another case will be, for example, 
Um, it could be for the sake of God. And someone is about to do something that is going to desecrate the name of God. In that case, you could use anger. There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually commanded to, you, are, you are commanded to do so. Another case will be kin'ah, jealousy. Usually, we don't say to anyone, uh, we, have, we have a commandment to be jealous. On the other hand, it says, kin'ah sofrim, uh, if you, you are jealous of someone else, someone who has more chokmah, more wisdom than you. So you're jealous in the sense that you want to be as wise as he or she is. More like inspiration. Right. It's an inspiration, but you get to the point of being jealous. Is that okay to be jealous from this person? You, I'm jealous because I want to be like him or like her. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Why? Because since this jealousy is used in a sense for something good, it's not, in a, that, it's not that you are um, criticizing this person and saying, ah, you know what? He's going to become better than me. No, no, no. What I want to do is, I'm jealous in a sense of I want to achieve what he achieved, what she, she achieved. Nothing wrong with that. It is actually a good thing to have. So that's the idea of Amida, of character trait. It's to measure it, to know when to use it, and sometimes when not to use it. Now, as we explained last time, right, there are four yesodot, four elements, and every three months, Right? Every actually four months is falls into one element. Which means that as we said a few minutes ago, every month there's a certain uh, element that is in control, but that doesn't mean that the other elements are not there at all. They are there, but they are not as strong as that particular element. Okay, so let's talk about ish, about fire. We have rules of gravity. Okay? Okay. We know the rules of gravity. And the cloud, we have to remember that there's a rule when it comes to those elements. Those elements, according to Jewish tradition, according to Chazal, to our rabbis, okay, come back. Every element is going to come back to its source. Okay? Which means, uh, if I take, for example, earth, right? or I take a rock, if I throw it up, what happens? It comes back down. Why? Because this is what gravity is all about. According to Chazal, to Allah, but it's not gravity. It has to do with the source. The earth is going to come back, it's going to go, go down, not because of gravity. It is because it's coming back to its source. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's something that is heavy like a rock. You take a few grains of... of, of um, um, sand, right? It's not very heavy, but it's going to come back down. Why? Because it goes back to its source. Fire, what happens to it? Elevation. It goes up. Why? Because that's the source of fire. The source of fire is Ruchniut, something that is spiritual. Right? It wants to go up because it wants to go back to the source where it came from. Right? Shamayim actually is Esh Humayim. The idea of fire, Shamayim, right, the heavens, is fire, where the source is, and Mayim and, um, and water. Okay? So it's interesting when you speak about water. It's something that is heavenly, it's not something that is material. And therefore, if someone is born under the element of fire, which is, by the way, the first month, the month of Nisan, right? So he is going to be someone who is going to be drawn to spirituality. Okay? Remember that. Now, when it comes to spirituality, by the way, there's also a choice that a person could make. He could be spiritual. How is he going to be spiritual? It's up to him or her to decide. Right? He could become uh, spiritual by going to um, other religions or by being drawn to, uh, if he's Jewish, to, to, to Judaism. So it's a choice that he has. Now, we could ask the question. We could find some, some people who are born in the month of Nisan who are actually from the element of fire, but they are not spiritual at all. How come? This is, again, a choice. 
a person could either um, express his tendencies by being spiritual, or he could try to strive for uh, them, to hide them, right? and not to show them, even though he is drawn to those particular um, tendencies. Now, being someone, if someone is born under the element of fire, fire represents heat, and therefore this person has to know how to use this element. Being someone who is drawn to heat could be good or less good. Why? Because if there's so much, sometimes too much heat, what is going to happen? That could burn someone else. In other words, so if we are dealing with someone who is born under the element of fire, sometimes we have to take distance from this person. Okay? If it's husband and wife, where the husband, for example, is water, and the wife is fire, okay? the husband will have to know when to sometimes give distance to his wife. If it's a business partner, or whatever it is, or a friend, they will have to know how to deal with that and to take, again, some distance at certain times. Um, at the same time, if someone is born under the element of fire, he will have to know how to not to get to a point of suffocating someone else. How to use this element of fire. Okay? Now, as we said, it could be being born under the element of fire could be something that is not so good. Why? Because that could burn the other elements. Okay? Which means, again, if someone is born under the element of fire, he could be sometimes thinking that he's above everyone. Why? Because, again, this tendency of going up, of being a leader, nothing wrong with being a leader. But if you are a leader and you say, you know what, I'm holier than thou, then there's a problem. There's, a, there's, there's an issue there. Okay? So, as the fire goes up, this person could be someone who is going to always look for kavod, for being honored, right? for being respected in the community or in his workplace or by his wife or by his uh, uh, siblings. And therefore, if he has to know how to use this element of fire, he will have to work on his humility. Okay? Afa. Okay, earth. Okay? Someone is born under the element of earth, that is going to be someone who is representing simplicity, uh, humility, modesty. It's going to be someone who uh, it doesn't, want, uh, doesn't want anything big in his life. Uh, he's going to be very down to earth. Um, he's going to be someone who's going to uh, be, it's going to be easy to get along with other people. But what this person will have to watch out for is that he's not going to, to be stepped on by other people, okay? It, it's good still a certain extent, but as we said last time, and I'll repeat it again, a person cannot become a doormat. And if someone is born under the element of afar, of earth, he could become, if he doesn't watch himself, a doormat, and obviously it's nothing, it's definitely something that is not good. So being born under this element uh, is not good also because this person is going to always, always be drawn to earth. He's going to feel sometimes that he's worthless, that he's not doing anything significant in his life. Sometimes he's going to be someone who's going to be unsatisfied with his life, with his accomplishments, okay? Um, and this is, by the way, sometimes good when we are standing in front of God. When we are standing in front of God, we have to use this idea of humility, of knowing that, you know, the fanecha in front of you, God, I am standing, you are um, above me, you are, the, you are the one who created me, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to life and to reality, it's definitely not good to think that I am nothing. Not good at all, okay? So therefore, we have to feel, we have to know who we are, 
we have to know that certainly we are we are accomplishing something in this in this world because if not we could get to the point of being depressed of depression which is definitely not recommended at all and therefore if someone is born under this element he has to watch out of getting not to getting to a point of being depressed that also could mean that if someone is born under the element of afar of earth it's going to be someone who's going to be lazy okay why because again he has this tendency of of uh, being drawn to earth you know like i'll take it easy i don't have to do it if i don't do it today i'll do it i'll do it tomorrow and so on and so forth which is definitely not a good thing again you can find people who are born under the element of afar of earth and they're actually not lazy at all why because they are working on themselves but they will have this tendency right, of uh, being someone who is uh, lazy uh, depressed and so on and so forth but that means by the way and it's important for us to remember that there's a difference between humility right, and self-esteem okay it's important to remember that many years ago um, there's a certain rabbi who, um, uh, who taught me and others uh, the following. He said, uh, he spoke about the Hafez Chaim. The Hafez Chaim was known to be someone who was uh, very, uh, a very humble man. Right? But at the same time, he's someone who wrote uh, quite a few books, and one of them is very known, the book that he, where he published it about the laws of slandering, Lashon Ara, and so on and so forth. A book that today was translated to, to many, many languages. And then the rabbi asked the question, says, ah, he was humble. How could he publish so many books? The fact is, he knew that to distinguish between right, humility and self-esteem. He knew that he was the Chafetz Chaim. Right? There's a famous story right, about uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein. Rav Moshe Feinstein was considered the Gadol Hador, right, the great halachic uh, decisor uh, of American Jewry. Right? He's someone who learned the Shulchan Aruch more than 600 times. He was a genius. Right? So I'll tell you two stories about him. One story is he was the Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva, Yeshiva Metifta um, Tiferet Yerushalayim, a right? great Rosh Yeshiva. And one day he was walking, and as he's walking in his Yeshiva, he hears the name Moshe. So he turns around to see who's calling him. And obviously, no one is going to call him Moshe. They call him the great from Rabbi Feinstein. But he was so humble that if someone is calling him Moshe, maybe they're talking to me. Obviously, they were not talking to him. They were talking to a student in the Yeshiva. But he was so humble. On the other hand, he was once uh, a certain young rabbinic student was arguing with him about a certain halakha that he decided that he, he, was, he wrote in his in Shailot Shavuot in his response. And as they were arguing back and forth, finally Rav Moshe Feinstein told him, no, this is the halakha. The other, the rabbinic student told him, how come he says, because I'm Rav Moshe Feinstein. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, right, what do we see? There's the idea of humility, but there's the idea of self-esteem, of knowing who we are. And if someone is born under the element of afar, you will have to work on this idea of self-esteem, knowing, you know, I know who I am, I know my, what I might accomplish, I, will, I know what I could accomplish, right? Um, and it's, it's, it's good for actually for this person to uh, review that during his life and his day in order not to get down to depression or to um, being, uh, as we said, uh, a doormat. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Ruach, um, air, wind, okay? Our rabbis teach us uh, that Ruach, someone who's born under Ruach, right? Air, it's going to be someone who's going to be very expressive because wind does a lot of noise, especially if it's strong, right? If someone is born under that element, he or she will be very expressive. Windy people, let's put it that way, well, we call them Ansheruach, windy people, are going to be people who are going to speak very well, very excellent speakers, very charismatic, they'll understand other people, they'll be people who will be able to bring shalom, peace between um, uh, 
uh, husband and wife, they, they're going to be good arbitrators, and <clears throat> they'll be able, again, um, to, to uh, do business as well. Why? Because they'll be able to bring people together, to draw them together, in order to uh, make some business deals. Um, something that is not so good about these windy people is they're going to be sometimes sweet talkers. Okay? And that means... And sometimes even they will not be intending to be sweet talkers, but this is the tendency that they will have. And that could lead them sometimes to lie. Okay? And therefore, a person who is born under ruach, air, is going to know, is going to have to know when to draw the line. And to say, you know, at can, you know, I can't, okay, I could be a sweet talker, but that's it, I can't lie, I'm not allowed to lie, and so on and so forth. Um, next one, mine, water. Water goes everywhere, right? If you spill water, right, by accident, right? you have a glass of water, it spills, it's all over the place, it could go on the floor, and so on and so forth. So, um, if someone is born under mine, water, it's going to be someone who's going to be very ambitious. As water goes everywhere, this person is going to go every, he's going to try everything, he's going to be an excellent businessman. He's going to try something. If it's not going to work, he's going to try something else. Till he gets to the point, to the, where he, to the goal that he wants to be, he is going to go to any crack as water goes to any place. Now, Chazal, our rabbi, teach us um, that someone who is born under mayim, under water, is going to have natural tendencies. Um, and therefore, um, they would want things that other people have, okay? And they'll have to pay attention to that. The good thing about it is, uh, there are going to be people who would love to share with other people, okay? Uh, and each one of us falls under one of those elements, okay? So far, so good? I'm not sure how accurate I am and if people are really... Uh, what I'm saying makes sense. Last time I gave this class, people were, many people were actually amazed. They said it was pretty accurate. I know that for me, definitely, where uh, my element is and so on and so forth, definitely, um, I could relate to that. Which one are you again? Me. I have a question. Yes. Um, is the way the elements get uh -huh. absorbed or dissolve no. somehow part of it too? Because water, for example, absorbs very quickly. Yes. But you can watch it happen. Yes. Air is always, in a way, absorbing, and it's always part of everything else. It's it, it, it yeah. definitely connected. Yeah. Definitely, there's something there. Yeah. Something there that. that um, and the way water spreads out, you can watch it, right? It takes certain paths. With air, it's kind of an instant. It's a gas, right? Definitely. Yeah. There's definitely connection there to who we are as well. So how do you how do you see parallels in people's characters? You think about I mean uh, it, it's I think there's definitely something there. I mean if you, if everyone will think about his or her um, element, I would say that they'll be able to hopefully figure it out. Okay, let's talk about the uh, the mazalots. Right, the constellations. Okay, so Nisa, coming back to Nisa, um, Aries, as we said before, what's the sign of the month? Lamb. Lamb. Okay, so it has to do with Pesach, it's Nisan. They used it during uh, Pesach for the Korban Pesach, okay? And therefore, it is connected to ish to fire. Why is it connected to fire? Because it says that the Korban Pesach, the offering of Pesach, you couldn't cook it. It had to be burnt. So it's connected to the month, ish. Okay? So therefore, again, if someone is born during the month of Nisan, he is going to be someone who is going to be a great leader. He's going to have the abilities of leadership, as we said, because fire goes up, and he's going to be someone who's going to have these great skills of 
a leader. Okay? Now, something that is not so good about it, a person could become a leader, but for bad purpose, for bad intentions. Again, it could be for, for having kavod, for having people honor him, okay? Um, to show people how great he is. And I did this, and I did that, and I accomplished this, and I accomplished that, and so on and so forth. So if someone is born under that element in the month of Nisan, again, he will have to work on his humility. And by the way, it has to do with Pesach as well. Why? Because on Pesach we have a mitzvah. What is the mitzvah? The mitzvah is to eat matzah. And another mitzvah is to not, not to eat chametz. Okay? Chametz represents ga'ava, haughtiness. Why? Because chametz, when you um, prepare it, what happens? It puffs. Right? It's the idea of someone, if someone is born under this, this element, it has to do with chametz. It's going to be someone who wants to be it uh, under big shot. Mm -hmm. But mitzvah of Pesach is to be like the matzah. The matzah is something that is very flat. It represents humility. And therefore the sign of the, the month is and uh, the message that we send to this person is humility. You have to work on your, on your humility. Be a leader for, for a good reason, for a good purpose, and get far away from being haughty. Work on your humility. Okay? Ia Afa, which is right, earth, and has, it, it's Taurus. Okay? So is it connected to the sun connected to the month? What do you think? So Nisan the Talib and Ia was a show. Exactly. Nachon. Okay. It has to do why? Because story is the sign of the month. What is it? Okay, a bull. Because usually it looks down to the earth. It's, it, it is connected to the to the earth. And therefore, if someone is born in the month of Iyar, it's going to be someone who is going to be anab, is going to be humble. Uh, it's going to be someone who is uh, spiritual, who wants to connect to God and to be, to be close to God. Why? Because when a person is humble, he understands that there's someone who is above him. Who is the one who is above? Who is the one who is in control of everything? God. If someone is born under this element in, in the month of Yah, it's going to be someone who will be spiritual, who would want to connect to God. He will understand that there's Birkat Hashem, there's the blessing of God, and that could be something that could connect him to God. Something that is not so good about these, the people who are born in the month of Yah, Afar again, earth, uh, again, as we said before, these people could be used and be taken advantage by other people, and he could become a doormat, and therefore, we have to know how to use this idea of humility, and as we spoke about it, the difference between humility and self-esteem. Um, I'll give you another example. It says that sometimes we have to say, Bishvili nivra haolam, the world was created for me and only for me, and on the other hand, we have to say, to say, Anochi afar va efer, I am nothing. Right? So there's a certain balance between Bishvili nivra haolam, self-esteem, the idea that the world was created only for me, and therefore if it was created, created only for me, I have to get to my goals in life, I have to have a vision. But on the other hand, we have to understand, uh, uh, I get to a certain point, right? I am a human being after all, there's a God who is above me, and therefore I have to make a nice balance between self-esteem and humility. Sivan, Teomi, Gemini, okay? Um, it is the month of Matan Torah. The Torah was given during the month of Sivan, and as we said last time, the Teomim, right? Talking about twins, two brothers, they symbolize things that happened during that month. First of all, Rashid, the, the first thing is Matan Torah, the acceptance of the Torah that was given by who? By Moshe and Aaron. 
the, this is the sign of the month. But they're, but they're not twins, they're just brothers. That's true, they're just brothers. But even though they were just brothers, there's two. And the fact is, in many ways, they were similar one to the other. Okay? There's also the connection between God and Am Israel. Okay? Why? Because God gave the Torah to Am Israel, to the Jewish people. Okay? So that the, the, these two brothers, in a sense, represent the marriage that took place at that time right, between God and the Jewish nation. Also, this the idea of Shneru Chotabrit, right, the two tablets of the law that were given during that month, and again it's represented by these twins. Okay? Now this month uh, is represented by the element of Ruach, of wind, of air, and Ruach also could be translated into spirit. Okay. Why spirit? Because the spirit was given to Am Israel, to the Jewish nation at that time. How? By the acceptance of the Torah. So, till the time that the Torah was given to Am Israel, to the Jewish nation, everything was working, but it was working on condition. What was the condition? God created the world only and, and promised that the world will exist only if Bnei Israel would accept the Torah. Okay? And this is the idea, the element of Ruach, wind, air, spirit, because everything, the Spirit of God, came to this world on condition, again, of Bnei Israel accepting the Torah. And when the Torah was given to Am Israel, and Am Israel accepted the Torah, then God changed his mind and says that the world will, will exist unconditionally. Why? Again, the acceptance of the Torah, this idea of Spirit. So people who are born in this month are going to be people who are going to be intelligent. Why? Because of this spirit, because of the Torah that was given during the month of Sivar. And these people will be able to relate and to um, transmit, communicate messages. Which messages? Any message that they want. They'll be great teachers. And certainly, if they are going to be relating and transmitting Torah, they will be great teachers. Why? Because of this idea that they were born in the month of Matan Torah, of the acceptance of the Torah. So these people will have a natural way of transmitting, of teaching. One more thing that we find during this month is, it says, Va'ichan Sham Israel. Israel camped there next to the mountain, Mount Sinai. Grammatically, it doesn't make any sense. It should have said, Vayachanu Sham Bene Israel. It doesn't say that. It says, Vayichan Sham Israel. It's talking in the singular. That the Jews camped there, but it says, Israel, Jew, in the singular, which means, what, the, what, what is the message? So Rashi points out and says, Ke ish echad echad. At that point, they were united as one entity, as one person. And therefore, people who are born during that month will be people who would have the ability of uniting people, of bringing people together. They will have the charisma of drawing people to death of making peace, of uniting people. <clears throat> um, our rabbis teach us also um, that the month of Sivan, there was a transformation. Which transformation took place? Bnei Israel were slaves and they became Bnei Chorim free. 
How did they become free? By, by accepting the Torah. And therefore, our rabbis teach us that if someone is born in the month of Sivan, he is going to have a diversified personality. Exactly like Bnei Israel, who transformed from being a slave into being slaves, from being slaves into being free people. So, a person who is born in the month of Sivan also will have this tendency of having di diversified personality. There's going to be people who are going to change a lot in their lives, um, and they're going to be prone to change, which means that if you, you have some people like that, I know some people, right, that you put them, whoever, in Timbuktu, they'll find their, 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 their way around. So they are going to be prone to change in a sense that even if they don't work in this field, they're going to work in another field. Even if they, they, they change cities from one city or from one country to another country, they'll be adaptive. They'll, they'll be adaptive. They'll be 100% okay with uh, that. And this is going to be, again, the tendency that people will have if they are born during that particular month. We do not argue for the same trait for people born during the sun. Why? Because of the... Transformation, slavery, we left uh, Egypt. Okay, 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 excellent. You can say, but it's not as strong as it is in the month of Sivan, because the month of Sivan was a complete transformation. Accepting the Torah right, was changed completely the lives of, of, of the Israel. Okay, yeah. so a more spiritual transformation. The yeah. other one was physical. You could say that as well. The idea of physical and, and, and spiritual. But the acceptance of the Torah was definitely changed completely the lifestyles of, of, of the Israel. I mean, imagine that. From being a slave, to accept in the Torah 613 commandments, right? To the point that when they accepted the Torah, right, what does it say? It says that during the month, during Shavuot, one of the customs that we have, is no commandment, but we have a custom. One of the customs is to eat daily, right? Why do we eat daily on, 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 on Shavuot? Because since they accepted the Torah, they had the laws of Kashrut. And the idea of Kashrut means but they could eat meat that to slaughter and so on and so forth. What would be the easiest way around it? To milk a cow and to have some cheese, or to have some milk or whatever it is. And therefore, what's the idea? The idea is complete transformation, the laws of Kashrut, the laws of Vatar, family purity, and Shabbat, and this and that. So that's really complete transformation. And why is there more acceptance of meat? Dairy is very easy to get. Also, it's easy. Okay. Yeah, that's the idea. It's one of the ideas. There's many ideas, many um, many reasons why we eat dairy on, on, on Shavuot, but this is just to, to prove a point, the idea of the idea, of, uh, the idea of, of, of transformation, the idea of, of, of all the laws, the laws of Kashrut and so on. And they have to cash out their utensils, I guess. Too. What is it? They have to cash out their utensils. That's, yeah, cash out their utensils is a lot that they have to do, okay? Um, so this is something that is positive, actually, right? Being prone to change, right, and adaptive is great because you could cope with all changes in your life. On the other hand, something that is negative, uh, that could bring the pe person to a degree of instability. Right? If you don't know how to use it and you're always changing, you become unstable. Right? And this is not good. Definitely not good. We, want, we don't want to get to that point. And again, that proves the point that we spoke about before. A person has to know when he was born, to know that he has those tendencies, and to say, I can't, to say to yourself, you know, until here, you know, I'm not going to go because if not, it's not going to be, I'm going to become unstable. If someone is married, it's not good for his relationship with his wife, with his children, and so on and so forth. So, uh, again, it's good, but it's, you have to know where to uh, stop it. Also, it could bring the person to lack of concentration, okay? And that could also bring the person of being very, very moody, right? Because uh, you know, there's this transformation, one, one minute he's happy, the other minute he's not so happy, he's angry, and so on and so forth. So, therefore, uh, a person who was born under this um, element and month um, will have to know how to uh, 
deal with that. Okay? Um, Tammuz. Okay? What is the science of the, the, the month of Tammuz? Water. Water. Okay? So, uh, water represents uh, someone who has great desires in life. Um, and a person has to understand what you will have to have in order to control those desires. Uh, people who are born under this element and month uh, are going to be extremely sensitive and will have to know a person who is dealing with them will have to know how to deal with them. Something that is positive about those people is that since they are so sensitive, they'll be very helpful towards other people. They'll be kind to them, they'll want to help them. And sometimes they will not be even sensitive to themselves. Since they're going to be sensitive towards other people wanting to help them, sometimes they will forget about uh, themselves. Again, we shouldn't forget that everything that I share with you, okay, first of all, it's not my ideas at all. Whatever I'm sharing with you, I'm just giving you what is written in the books. I'm just teaching you that. If anything that you heard tonight and last time is not for me, okay? It's written in this Farima Goshim in, the, in our holy books. That's one thing. The other thing is to remember is what I'm talking about is in a general way and sometimes it, it, those people will be prone to that but uh, they could change it. Which means you can't go out of this class tonight saying, you know what, okay, I'll go and I'll ask all my friends what is your element and so on and so forth. And according to what I learned, I'll see if it's true or not. Sorry, but you'll, sometimes you'll be disappointed. The fact is, we could, a person could work on himself, change those uh, character traits that um, he has. Uh, but again, usually these people will always be prone to those character traits to what I um, to what I shared with you, okay. Um, now this month, the month of Tammuz, wasn't a very uh, great, good month for Am Israel for the Jewish people. Uh, why? Because during that month, the Jews started to worship Egel Hazahav, the golden calf. Okay, in the uh, word, the name Sartan. Right, which is the um, sign of the month in Hebrew, we find also the letters of Satan. Okay? Because in Hebrew you could tr uh, transform the Samech into the Sin. So we have the word Satan, okay? which is the Yetzirara, the evil inclination. So uh, the month of Tammuz wasn't a great month for Am Yisrael because again, the golden calf also on the 17th of Tammuz, Moshe Rabbeinu comes down, he sees the golden calf, he breaks the Luchot, the first tablets, and also the Meraglim, the spies, went into Eretz Israel, into the Holy Land, during the month of Tammuz, and as we know, they came back with, 10 of them, 10 out of 12, came back with some negative um, news about Eretz Israel, negative information about the Holy Land. Now Moshe Rabbeinu had to go back um, to again speak with God and to communicate with God and to get the second tablet and he didn't go back. Right? And therefore since he didn't go back he waited. Right? He waited till the month of Elul and then he went again the month of Elul he went up again for the second time and he came back down 40 days later which is the 10th of Tishrei Yom Kippur right? so since he waited that took away the security of Nisa and they were insecure and because of that uh, by the way so, sorry I'm talking about something else Moshe Rabbeinu by the way it's true that he waited to go the second time in order to accept the Luchot, but Bnei Israel were insecure because they miscalculated when Moshe Rabbeinu is going to come. Okay, and because of that, they worshipped the golden calf. 
And therefore, if someone is born under that element and month, they are going to have sometimes the sense of insecurity, of being insecure people. There are going to be people who are going to worry a lot. And all this is because of Moshe Rabbeinu not coming back on time according to the calculation of Bnei Israel, making them insecure. These people are going to panic easily. For one little thing, they're going to great, get into great panic. And one more thing that is not going to be so good about them, they are going to move away from reality. Okay? Why? Because this has to do with the Meraglim, with the spies. When the spies came back with their negative information about Israel, they removed themselves from reality. Which means that they gave certain information that they were not supposed to give. They were supposed to go and give Moshe Rabbeinu the reality. This is what we saw. It's up to you to decide. You are the leader. They didn't do that. They removed themselves from reality. They said that they were kachagavim, like grasshoppers, in front of all these huge, great giants. And that was removing themselves from reality. Again, it has to do with if someone is born in this month, this person is going to have the tendency of removing himself or herself from the act. Okay. So far so good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We'll do the month of Av. The month of Av, Arye, Leo, presented by a lion. This is fire. Okay. Why fire? Because during the, this month, the two Batya Amikdash temples were burnt, and this fire devoured the Jewish nation as the lion devours his prey. Now, Tisha B'Av was the time that the Meraglim, the spies, came back from Eretz Israel, from Israel. And they gave all their bad report information to Moshe Rabbeinu and to the Jewish people. And then God decided during that day, Shabbat, that this is going to be a time, a day, a month that the Jewish people are going to be crying about for generations to come. They're going to lament about it, they're going to cry about it, they're going to mourn about it. And we still do it today, as we know. Shabbat is the saddest day of the Jewish calendar. Now the issue with the Meraglim, with the spies was that each one represented his tribe. And they were sent in order to bring information, facts. The issue is they didn't bring those facts, this information, but they saw exactly what was going on and they gave interpretation to what they saw and they were not supposed to do that. Okay? Now, they interpreted the way that they wanted to interpret it. No one told them that, to do that. And therefore, they even said things that never happened. And that changed completely the process through their mind, the way that they were thinking. And that brought something terrible to the Jewish nation, as we know. And they believed that complete faith... Um, that they will have the right to be the leaders, which by the way, they didn't have the right to be the leaders, all these people who were sent. They will be the leaders of Am Israel, of the Jewish nation, and that was wrong. Why? Because the only leader that we have is God. God could sometimes appoint a, a, a king, and he did. He could appoint a leader, which was Moshe Rabbeinu, but even Moshe Rabbeinu was leading by who? By God. God was the one who was telling, them, telling him how to lead, what to say. Those leaders forgot about that. And they thought, you know, we have the right to say whatever we want to say. Because we are the leaders of our tribes and that's the end of the story. And again, that represents the Arya, the lion. Why? Because as we know, the Arya is the king of all animals. 
and he sometimes thinks that he's in control of everything as the spies thought. Now, if someone is born under, in the month of Av, and in this Mazal, the element of the constellation, an element of um, Esh, of fire, he's going to be someone who will have tendency to be a leader, but a leader who will want to basically be in control of everything, okay? And you have people like that. You have people sometimes who jump and impose themselves on other people, on society. Um, they want their feelings, to, they express their feelings and they want other people to feel the way that they feel. Sometimes their thoughts that, that they have, they want other people to, to, to think the way that they think, right? Sometimes you could be, for example, in a meeting where you have to make, you have a decision that has to take place. And you have one, one person there who tries to impose himself on other. And if they don't take his position, what happens sometimes? He leaves. Right? He is not part of this board anymore, of this society anymore, of this company anymore. Why? Because he feels that he has to be uh, in control. So, even though Av, in a sense, is the worst of all months for Am Israel, the Jewish people always believed that there is not there's no end to anything and there is always hope. 